All right, Robert. Hi there. Robert, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, I'm uh, originally from uh, Provo, Utah. My family lived a mile away from B BYU, Brigham Young University. And we were probably one of the, the few non-Mormon families in that entire city. So that was uh, very interesting growing up. Uh, my mom was a, a hippie waitress and my dad came back from uh, Vietnam uh, in a bottle. And I was pr pretty closed off for most of my life. I had an older sister who was 10 years my uh, senior and uh, a brother who was uh, two years older than I was the last. How do you describe your childhood? Um, I always was just a, a, a sweet kid. I always want, thought that things would be as simple as they should be. You know, people would do things out of the kindness of their hearts, live by the golden rule. Um, but I always felt like I've been the outsider among outsiders, uh, like a, the black sheep of the black sheep of my family. And it's... It's been frustrating, but it's definitely been a long, strange trip. I'll say, I'll say that much. Um, back, then, it, back then, at least? Um, back then, well, me personally, it wasn't, but my parents would always be sitting around the coffee table, uh, uh, smoking cigarettes, uh, burning pine cones, uh, and uh, they were just, uh, doing their thing. And I thought that was uh, just normal everybody else's life. Um, I, I initially started with uh, marijuana when I was about 15 or 16. So I was basically the staunch goody two, two shoes kid. I'm like, I don't think I should be doing that. But then uh, my brother got me uh, stoned for the first time. And it's uh, been, marijuana has been one of the things that's uh, followed me the longest in my life. Um, after, then I went to, uh, doing, a, uh, methamphetamine speed with my brother when I moved in with him back in 2001, but I stopped that back in 04 up until, uh, the middle of 2019, not even wanting a touch of it. And, uh, then of course the drinking before I turned 21, cause it's like, where's the fun in it now? It's just fulfilling a prophecy at this point. And uh, then I got into some hallucinogens. Um, I've always been a bit of a psychonaut, and I guess that's the hippie part of my family, bloodline running through. Um, uh, yeah, outside of that, um, I haven't really, I don't do any of the opiates, uh, nothing with needles. Um, yeah, it's, I don't do prescription pills either after living with my mom, but. And as I'm like dying or a doctor's shoving it down my throat, I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> How'd you end up down here? Um, I moved out here back in uh, 2006 uh, when the job I was working at was getting ready to phase out my position. I worked for the college that I graduated from. I put myself through a, a, a tech school for uh, uh, computer sciences. And I had my degree before I even owned a freaking computer, so. Um, that was, uh, that was good. Uh, yeah, I moved out here with, uh, my girlfriend at the time we met and did the long distance thing for a bit. And, uh, that really didn't work out. I kind of, uh, cramped her style. Uh, she was a musical theater person and, uh, it was just, uh, water and oil to say the least. Um, but she was a, she was a good person. Um. Uh, yeah, I moved out here, worked for a private Jewish organization as their uh, IT person for five years, then moved over to their high school and junior high school for five years after that. Um, and Are you Jewish? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm actually, I'm not really any religion at all. I didn't, I didn't even know about religion until I was in like eighth grade. And I'm like, why are all these kids not going, not hanging out with me? It's like, Oh, religion's part of it. Okay, okay, cool. But I've always kept an open mind. Um, I believe in the idea of uh, pick and choose, uh, uh, create your own religion, for lack of better terms, um, where a lot of the base ideas I can get behind, like life's short, be cool to your fellow man, 
we've only got one planet, don't fuck it up. But it's, to me, it's felt like all of the horrible things done in the name of God, and once man gets his hands on it, it's just like nothing more than a cudgel for uh, power and uh, control and money. Hmm. And it's just, that part's always rubbed me wrong, but... Uh, if and if anything, I'd say I'm probably more spiritual and uh, Buddhist type of uh, mentalities. Mm -hmm. and, and you told me you got married. Uh, yes, I, uh, I when I was working at that the first school, uh, the lady I moved out here with, she broke up with me rather harshly, and uh, like a couple years down the road, she sends me out to this. Uh, impact training course where they just uh, one of those five day crash course we're going to get you all all of your uh, childhood traumas taken care of and uh it, that was freaking uh, changed my life uh, it was for the first time ever i was optimistic happy and people would see me walking down the down the hallways with a smile on my face and go like, what all right robert what the hell's wrong with you <laughs> um but I, it was then that I met my uh, ex-wife, now ex-wife, and she was a uh, kindergarten uh, co-teacher in the elementary school. And I I've basically, when I was in that training, we did a guided meditation of what do you want most in the world? Put it out there, I'll out the secret pretty much. And I'm like, I've always wanted a family. I want to be able to have someone to share my life with. And the chance to be a father and be a better parent to my children than I had, obviously. And I was just gung ho, all uh, full tilt. Let's do it, hundred percent on board. And um, uh, in the beginning, it was great. Um, we were almost inseparable, and hell, I even waited like a month and a half to kiss her, for God's sake. And uh, it was uh, very unheard of for me. Um, then she got what well, was back to work, and then I asked her to move in. She was getting kicked out by her roommate at the time, and uh, everything after that was just a hard stop, rubber stamped no to anything that I would suggest, and uh, it was just tearing me apart because I was still foolishly thinking I can logically reason with her, I can show her my vulnerability, and she'll appreciate that. Wasn't well, the case. Um, I'm, even the slightest thing of uh, suggesting, let's move out of California. It's expensive. If I did the same thing in, a, say, fucking Nebraska, I'd be, we'd be able to live like kings. No. And it's just always that. But I held on to hope and foolishly. Uh, we got married about a year later. Um, and that's when things started ha ha getting weird. So I, after I got married, I'm like, all right. This is not going to change anytime soon. I've held out to hope long enough. You were having problems before you got married? Uh, yeah, it was like when we were, before we got engaged, it was just, I asked her to move in and I basically was never allowed to have any voice. Um, anytime I tried to tell her about it, it would just be uh, gaslighting me through uh trying to control the narrative, change, move goalposts. You, you didn't think about putting the brakes on? Um, it was what I wanted. And I was going off of, I, I put it out to the universe. I, I'm going to make this work. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, it was after we got married, I'm like, all right, a couple of months. I see this, see where this is going. Then we find out, Hey, you're pregnant. I'm like, oh, great. Well, I can get off just do like some small, uh, 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 what is it? <laughs> Child support deals. Our Come to find out, our first child was born with a heart issue. And uh, when she found that out, she had gotten let go from her job. So I was the sole provider. And uh, I've then, my, in my internal thought, I just process, I just said, well, I'd be a real asshole if I decided to leave now. Uh, maybe we could work things out. And it was just always a one sided uphill battle with for me. And yeah, for like the first year, I couldn't do anything right in her eyes. I, I helped raise three of my nephews in Utah, but with my daughter, she had to have full iron control. And I just, I was being micromanaged bad, badly. And then I just 
recluse away from that went into work. Um, we had a, a uh, that was shortly after we got married. I we switched to campuses. She got fired, so I was in a new place. And then a year and a half later, we have our second daughter. Um, first one is uh, Molly, and my youngest is Willow. Um, yeah, she was basically like my shadow, my little mini me, and uh, it was it was one of the best moments in my life. Even with her tarnishing it, it was nothing would made me feel better after going home from work and just being full clip charged at by my little three-year-old and having her just leap in my chest and almost tackle me, hearing her high-pitched voice saying, Daddy. And, sorry. But the stressors just kept mounting up more and more. Uh, I eventually got let go from the high school and right after we moved into a new uh, $1,900 two-bedroom apartment. So I'm like, oh, great. I looked out, met one of my friends on a Gmail chat, asked him where he was working, if he had a job. And luckily enough, I did. Um, it was with uh, Entertainment Partners. Um, if you ever had a job in uh, payroll, uh, uh, sorry, in the movie industry, they've given you your paychecks, more or less. They were the ADP of Hollywood. Um, I did took to that like uh, Duck to Water. I had my own building I was operating for a while. Um, and then slowly it turned into the corporate takeover, training your uh, replacements, having to worry about the, uh, the chopping block every six months. And it was just that level of stress, along with the un unresolved anything. So that anytime I would try to say, I've got a problem with this, it'd be, we'll talk about it at a later time, the day that never comes. With your wife? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think the problem was at home? I think that the problem was I now after a lot of thinking, I think I was just a mark. I was just he's tall, he's affable, he's uh, got good genetics, and I can ride this out for a while. So I'm still digger heels in and uh, basically live out my usefulness until I snap. <laughs> Um, which wasn't that far long, long ago. <laughs> that was when we, the corporate job was getting really, really hairy. They were always talking about uh, letting, selling the, the business. And that just, it gave me so much anxiety. I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate it. Um, yeah, then in the round of uh, 2017, uh, we take our first trip back to Utah because my dad was dying and I hadn't seen him in over a decade because he was just a drunk asshole, pretty much. And I, she got to see me and my family in our native element, just having a good time. And that was enough for her to mentally go, nope, not happening. And then she went even more into the ignoring me thing until middle of 2019, I'm sitting there just telling her, I need something from you. I don't know how much longer I can do this. I really think I'm slipping. I need some help, like any spouse would. She looks at me, blank face, says, I've got two girls to raise. I don't should not have to worry about your emotional well-being. And prior to that, I had not even tried to fraternize with outside people because I know, uh, being the addict child of an addict's child, that it it's very easy for me to slip up and there's a fine line between drug free and free drugs when you're having a bad day or you're meeting someone to help you get out of a, a rut. It's, I just said, fuck it, went with it. Uh, I relapsed after 15 years on uh, methamphetamines and it was that time I, I started also uh, uh, experimenting with uh, guys because <laughs> they were appreciative. I for I it's been like six years since I had any sort of compliment or uh, advance on me from my wife, and I just walk down the street somewhere. I get people cat calling me left and right. I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. I can get used to this. Uh, um, yeah, I relapsed and uh, 
then I met someone online who was, turns out to be even worse than my wife was. Um, she was just hounding on me right from the get-go, doing what they call love bombing, just building your ego up so high and like, oh, anything you want, I'll do. Just uh, make being the picture-perfect best person. And uh, yeah, I, that November of 19, I told my wife, Look, I, I can't do this, I need to take a break. I tried to finally tell her my issues I had, and she said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes. I guess with her, those types of people, when they say they'll talk about it another time, mentally they're going, all right, that's done. Don't ever have to think about it again. As they just live in their own fantasy world of, uh, I have to be in control and nobody's going to get, get it over on me and I will orchestrate everything to work in my favor and him, don't care, he's chaff. Um, yeah, um, so I separate from my wife in, uh, 2019, December, uh, November, I go hard and heavy with this other girl and it was just young, dumb kids who were, uh, having a, a new relationship and going on a bender together. So it was like all of the fun things my wife wouldn't do, she was on all about. And, uh, yeah, I had the bender told my wife about the fact that I relapsed just out of uh, open, being open and honest. And uh, 2020, <laughs> 2020 happened and then everything just went careening downhill. So January, I get kicked out of my apartment by my wife after she finds my phone, work phone. February, I try to leave the uh, rebound and she says, Oh, it would be a shame if cops were to come here and they would see all this stuff in this room that's in your name. Basically, emotionally blackmailing me. Because I know anything on my record, I won't be able to see my kids. March, COVID happens. And that has been one of my things I've been terrified of my entire life. I got sent to the hospital in April for an infection that I had in my brain. Find out I get furloughed in Mar in May. I get fired in July and end up totaling her uh, car because one of her wonderful things was telling me she would do something and then just incessant hours of arguing nonstop. Me just trying to talk her off the ledge and just back and forth. And I'm like, please just make this stop. What, what do you think the problem was with her? With her, she had extreme abandonment issues um, where my wife was, I would say, a almost a malignant narcissist. She was a histrionic narcissist. She's one where she would just freak out over the smallest things. And it was just gaslighting to try to get me to snap. And, um, yeah, she came from like a, a well, t well off family, but she was the, uh, the, uh, the adopted child, not the na natural child. So their parents had kind of had the, looked at her in a bad light. Uh, yeah, after I l lose my job, I total her car going up uh, Laurel Canyon. And uh, that next month, after my, see my youngest uh, birthday in the beginning of July, my wife says, I want you to meet us on uh, Saturday at the park for a play date. So I hobble over there. I'm standing there waiting. And I see out of the corner of my eye, somebody comes up to me, hands some papers to me. I look down, like, I, I don't know what this is. So I said again, it says Bingham versus Bingham. I realized I had just been served, and my wife wanted me to have nothing, and she wanted to basically cleave all of our assets, uh, which left me with nothing but her old raggedy ass car. And then I was being sent to court. And uh, I'm like, I can't we just try to make this work, try to reason with her, say, the kids need both of us. And she immediately just went uh, cold lipped. Um, the entire case, the only thing they had against me was the fact I relapsed. And she tried to do three restraining orders, two of them with bullshit domestic charges. 
I hate conflict. I would never start a fight with anybody in the world. I, when I hear people go above like a slightly agitated uh, speaking, I instinctively crumble. It's fucking a thing from living with my dad and him bellering all the time. But she played me off to be this horrible, horrible monster. But I couldn't get anything done because I was being bludgeoned by the other person constantly, just being gaslit to where I had to be away from her. She broke her foot before COVID happened just on purpose, just so she could be the cartoon patient with the dinner bell saying, get me this whenever I need it. And yeah, that's when I went full bore into uh, being with guys. Cause it's like, if I have to be in a hotel room with that woman, one of us is going to be catching a charge and I don't want to have to do that. I'm just saying being with guys. It was, uh, I found out about the, uh, like the apps online and I realized that people were th going gaga over me. And it was like, this is something totally alien to me. And it's like, I, I can be with people who actually want to get to know me. Or I can be here with a, a mixture of uh, Annie Wilkes from Misery and Tyler Durden from Fight Club. So it's like losing, changing personalities and just being super sweet to everybody else, but yeah, behind closed doors. Right, but you, when you say being with guys, you mean? With, uh, 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 sexually. And it was just uh, hooking up with them or meeting people or just having someone to talk to. Because a lot of the time I just needed to have somebody to vent with. Vent, vent with. And you started using, what, what, what drug are you using now? Um, now I'm uh, I'm nearing the end of my uh, usage of uh, methamphetamines. I'm just, I'm tired of it. And with all the fentanyl stuff going around there, I'd, I, I, don't, I don't see the point in it. And I don't want to risk it because that shit's just evil right how long have you been using crystal meth down here um i initially uh, three years from my first stint i went to 04 and then uh in the middle of 2019 to, until now and you've been on the streets for how long um i officially on the streets it was uh about two years now um because the person i met after my wife she got onto my lease at the hotel where I was blowing all of my money just living there and got used my COVID money to be there for a year additionally. So I was, yeah, you know, that place was set in stone and she'd tell me, all right, you've got until March, then everything, then you'll have to find a place. She leaves after stealing about $8,000 of mine after pulling out for my 401k. And then I get a notice three days later. Yeah, we're going to be going back to daily uh, uh, rent pay, uh, pay, uh, payment. If you can't pay and you owe something, get out of here in two days and we'll write it off. And at that point, I'm, my brain is fucking scrambled. I can't hardly function. I was a high-level genius uh, growing up always. And now I can barely uh, keep a steady thought or paperwork following up with that stuff. No, it's almost impossible. And up until recently, anytime I hear a child or anything that reminded me of my daughters, I would just start sobbing uncontrollably from just PTSD. Do you speak with your daughters anymore? Um, I get, uh, I'm supposed to have a couple hours on a Zoom with them. But my wife is uh, gatekeeping that uh, to the best of her abilities. And I have no idea what they're saying behind closed doors. Uh, to my guess, it's just nothing. They're left with whatever notions they had in their head. And uh, I bet my, anything's mentioned about me, my wife goes into a hold breath, just you can feel the energy change and the kids are like, all right, right. Never mind. So I'm basically dead to her. Now that you're seeing men, do you have any interest in women anymore? Nowadays, I I naturally still love women, but the way things are going now, it's a rigged game, and 
uh, having someone say, so what do you do on a first date? I just have to go, all right, you have a good one, bye. <laughs> It's like everybody's looking for a, a paycheck or a, a, a free ride, and it's just like, yeah, it's not not worth it. And just the evil, the, their ulterior motives that they usually hide behind are just too much for me. I can see through a lot of that toxic shit now, and it's just so prevalent. It's just like, it's not worth it. If somebody wants to get with me, fine. I'm always a loving person, and it's just... Do you find relationships with men more I, fulfilling? I, I still haven't been able to do, like, a full textbook uh, relationship yet, but I, I find it significantly easier. It's like, no bullshit. If, you want, if someone seems cool, you talk to them. You don't fucking have to worry about, hey, buy me a dinner, buy me a date. And it's like, no, it's just like, hey, how's it going? What's up? Not much. And just carry it on, nor start chopping it up normally. As I, up, and chopping it up. Just like that. Involves sorry. sex sometimes. No, 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 yes, sometimes. It's like with the guys, it's, it's easy. You need a place, a pulse, a willing participant, a, hey, psh, wink and a nod. And it's like, yeah, you're probably going to have some fun. <laughs> Uh, 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 and honest, uh, additionally, around the time I started figuring out guys, I had used the apps as a springboard to get me into socializing. So I, for the longest, most majority of my life, I'd been a recluse. I had only did work and I didn't really socialize with other people. So that's been one of the things that's helped me kind of keep my wits about me is just being able to... Um, uh, talk to people and get to know them. Uh, still, I'm going to eventually come at, gum up the works with a two by four through the spokes of me just being awkward and not knowing how the hell to finish the sentence. But uh, it's a, uh, it's been a uh, renaissance at knife point. I like to call it. And how are you surviving? Uh, but by the grace of God and the kindness of other people, right now. I'm on food stamps. Um, I'm practically broke. I've got like 10K left of my retirement, but that's in like a 10 year account. Um, yeah, it's just, I've got a couple of good friends that haven't totally wigged out on me. As prior, all my friends were at work, and once I got fired, it's like, Everybody vanished like a fart in the wind. And with me just being my wife and my family, and that was it for my out of work social life, it was just gone. And any time that I'd think about it, I would just get so fucking down. What, what is stopping you from trying to rebuild your life and just get a job and get secure? Right now, it's my, uh, my inability to focus. Uh, the fact that I still have some strong triggers as I, I can't be doing a, a face to face technical support like I had been and hearing a song and just start blubbering like a freaking uh, sobbing child. And, uh, and I'm honestly four years of, uh, out of practice with computers and, and uh, the big one is just not having any stable ground to uh, stand on is having to worry about where you're going to sleep every night. Yeah, you're, you're on the streets. I, I'm on the streets, but I don't sleep on the streets. I've if, if I don't have a place to go, I will just walk. I will just walk until morning time. And the crystal meth helps you stay up all night. Yeah, but I don't do it to that level. I've I I've learned sleep deprivation causes a lot of. of good people to turn evil and I've lost a good selection of my who I thought were my friends just because of that they would concoct something in their head that they were 100% sure of and it's like I don't know what the hell you're talking about buddy and it's just like get out of here now I'm like okay cool have a, have a good one mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the boundary setting thing has been a, a, a constant challenge of mine it's uh, 
always been difficult for me to say no to somebody, even if they've got like a sob story behind it. I'm, I'm a freaking bleeding heart. I'm a fucking uh, a natural empath. I walk into a room and I say, all right, I can like f instinctively feel what other people are feeling. If something's off, it's just, it's a blessing and it's a curse. <laughs> Do you have any regrets in your life? <sighs> not listening to my gut, saying, putting my, not having enough self-respect to end my suffering when I knew it was bad and holding on to hope with the wrong people. I, yeah, it's, have, wearing my heart on my sleeve I, it was never a good thing and I found out the hard way how bad it can get and it just irritates the hell out of me because I know that after looking at everything I all of my problems in my marriage were all caused from her machinations her inability to hear anything or her fucking around behind the scenes. And uh, just her inability to own up and say, you know what, I did this, this is wrong. I saw how it made you feel this way. It was always just, sorry, or feigned ignorance or just the, the sheepish. Oh, do, do, you, do you take any responsibility for deciding to go ahead with the marriage when you saw signs before there were, I, were you I, married? I, I, Blame my naivete on uh, naivete and believing in the uh, manifestation principles at face value. How old, and not, how old uh, are you now? I'm 41. 41. Yeah. And my girls are uh, 11 and 9, and it's been almost four years since I've seen them. Mm. And now with the way the world's going, it's like a lot of things that I'm seeing and learning are terrifying me and it's like i want to be there for them i've as a man as a father you're there to provide and protect for your children at the very least and it's like when you're being s snowballed and ignored by someone who's just a thin ego trying to avoid reality at all costs it's like you are really going to hold on to that well i am desperately trying to help you guys and it's it gets to be too much at, at times as damn it I just wanted to fucking be if, if anything I would have just loved to have had one more fucking hug for my kids I'd walk away from it all if I could have that I even told her tell me what the hell I did wrong to piss you off I will walk away you can have whatever you want and what I got from her was, I can't help you heal that way. So it's just like... What, what do you think her complaints would have been about the relationship? Um, the only ones that I can recall were her calling me a coward for not uh, being brutal with the breakup as she was. And... Um, she would always say it was my uh, temper, but the only reason I had a temper is because of open wounds that were never allowed to heal, that she would just constantly uh, pebble me with rocks, and I would just get to the point where I'd snap. And it was, that was never anything I liked, knowing that I'd caused any three of them to ever cry. I hate it. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a shame that it unfurled the way it did. And if, by all accounts, I should be the one spewing vitriol about her. And it's like, it, what's done is done. I was an idiot. I not even made the wrong choices. But at the very least, for the sake of our kids, is have both of us together and not basically recreate her childhood inadvertently as yeah it's been last time I've, I've tried to talk to my kids every time it's like we don't want to talk to them we don't want to talk to them or if we do talk it's more of a debriefing and 
I can't say anything before I get muted, shut down, or come to find out that she had a, a hissy fit because of something I said triggered her, and then the girls were just there to stoke the flames, pretty much, while I'm just sitting there full of just sadness and like I almost emotionally uncontrollable at times. It's just, I, I, don't, see, I don't understand why it happened, but. Is there any, anything you've learned from this, Robert? I've, I've learned the power, power of discernment, learning to uh, rein back uh, generosity and kindness, but not to the extent of just becoming a callous dick. Um, I've learned that a lot of the people with the, has the brightest, shiniest veneers, the, uh, say, let's say, perfect people or the perfect tens, if you sit down and look at them long enough, they're probably the most hideous people that you will ever meet. There's something about them that's just like teams with uh, just nastiness. Whereas the people who have get cast aside and looked at and just ignored by public and mass, some of them are the kindest people in the world. They've got genuine caring hearts. But it's, again, up to discernment to not get, uh, get caught. All right, Robert, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you very much, sir. I wish you lots of luck from here on. Thank you. Thank you.